Hello students, welcome to today's lecture on Theory of Machines. In previous lecture, we discussed about the simple band break. We derived the equation for the force applied in both the conditions of the rotation of the drum, that is clockwise and anti-clockwise rotation of the drum. We also solved a numerical problem based on simple band break. In simple band break, one of the end of the band is always connected to the fulcrum point. Simple band break can neither have self-energizing properties nor it can be self-locked. Now, in today's lecture, we will be discussing about the differential band breaks. We will derive the equations for the force applied in various configurations and also try to find out whether the differential band break can be self-locking or not. So, let's move ahead with differential band break. Let's see the differential band break. This is the drum and this is the lever which has been hinged at this point O and you can see that the fulcrum is provided somewhere along the length of the lever and not on one side of the lever. This is the shape of the lever. This is the band. One end of the band is connected to this point and another end is connected to this point. The radius of the drum is R and the angle of wrap is theta. The distance of end A of the band from the fulcrum is A and distance of end B from the fulcrum is B. This is the force P that will be applied at the end of the lever and the distance of force V from the fulcrum is L. So, as the drum is rotating in the clockwise direction, so this will be the tight side and this will be the slack side. The tight side is having tension T1 and slack side is having tension T2. So, T1 is the tension on the tight side of the bend. T2 is the tension on the slack side of the bend. Theta is the angle of wrap or contact of the band on the drum. Mu is the breaking line friction coefficient. R is the radius of the drum. And P is the force applied at the end of the lever. Now, as discussed earlier, the limiting ratio of tensions is given by T1 by T2 is equal to e to the power of mu theta. And the breaking torque on the drum is given by Tb is equal to T1 minus T2 into R. These two equations we will be using for solving the numericals. Now, in the differential band break, the band is not connected to the fulcrum as in case of simple band break. So, the effectiveness of the force P depends upon the following. The direction of rotation of the drum, the ratio of the lengths A and B and the direction of applied force P. So, depending on the configuration of this differential band break, the force P will be applied either from upward to downward or from downward to upward, depending on the length of A and B. This we will see in the upcoming discussion. Now, to apply the break on the rotating drum, the band on the drum should be tightened. And this is possible if A is greater than B and the force is applied from the... This is possible if force P is applied in the downward direction when A is greater than B and force P is applied in the upward direction when A is less than B or B is greater than A. These configurations we will discuss one by one. So, let's start with the first case. The first case is when A is greater than B and P is applied in the downward direction. You can see in the diagram that the distance A is greater than B and the force is applied in the downward direction. When the force is applied in the downward direction, this side of the belt will be pulled up and the band will be tightened. When the force is applied in the downward direction, this side of the band will be pulled up and the band will be tightened and the brakes will be applied. If the force is applied in the upward direction in this case suppose, then in that case this portion of the lever will come down and the band will be loosened and thus the brakes will not be applied. So, if A is greater than B, then the force should be applied in the downward direction. Now, let's see the counterclockwise rotation in this case and let's find out the value of P. So, now the drum is rotating in the counterclockwise direction. So, this side of the belt will be the tight side having the tension T1 and this side of the belt will be the slack side having the tension T2. Now, this is the free body diagram for the lever which is having forces P, T1 and T2. So, taking moments about the fulcrum point O, we have tension T1 
will be rotating the lever in the anti-clockwise direction about the fulcrum. So the moment of tension T1 will be positive and the magnitude will be T1 into the distance A. The force P will be rotating the lever in the clockwise direction about the fulcrum. So the moment of force P will be negative and the magnitude moment of force P will be P into the distance L. Similarly, T2 will also rotate the lever in the clockwise direction about the fulcrum. So the moment of T2 will also be negative and the magnitude will be T2 into the distance B. So we can write the moment equation as follows. T1 into A, that is the positive moment, minus P into L and minus T2 into B will be equal to 0. From here, we can get the equation of P as P is equal to T1A minus T2B divided by L. Now, as T1 is greater than T2, also A is greater than B, then this product of T1 into A will always be greater than T2 into B. So this P will always be positive. So under all conditions, the effectiveness of the brake will depend on this force P. Now, let's see the other condition. That is, the drum is rotating in the clockwise direction. So when the drum is rotating in the clockwise direction, this side of the band will be the tight side and having tension T1 and this side of the band will be the slack side having tension T2. Now this is the free body diagram of the liver in this case which is involving force P, T1 and T2. Now taking moments of the forces about the fulcrum O we have T2 will rotate the lever in the anti-clockwise direction about, about the fulcrum. So the moment of T2 will be positive and the magnitude will be T2 into A. That is the perpendicular distance of line of action of T2 from fulcrum. That is nothing but A. Then force P will rotate the lever in the clockwise direction about the fulcrum. So the moment of force P will be negative and the magnitude will be P into the distance L. Similarly, T1 will also rotate the lever in the clockwise direction about the fulcrum. So the moment of T1 will also be negative and the magnitude will be T1 into B. So the moment equation can be written as T2 into A minus P into L minus T1 into B is equal to 0. T2 is a positive moment and P into L is a negative moment and T1 into B is a negative moment. So from here we can get the value of P as T2A minus T1B divided by L. Now, as T2 is less than T1 and A is greater than B, so this brake will be effective as long as T2A is greater than T1B. That is, T2A should be greater than T1B. That is, T2 upon T1 should be greater than B upon A. So this brake will be effective as long as the ratio of T2 and T1 is greater than the ratio B upon A. Now suppose if T2A becomes less than or equal to T1B. So when T2 upon T1 becomes less than or equal to B upon A, then P is zero or negative. That is the brake becomes self-locking as no force is needed to apply the brake. Once the brake has been engaged, no further force is required to stop the rotation of the drum. So, when A is greater than B and force P is acting in the downward direction, if T2 upon T1 is less than or equal to B upon A, then this configuration of the brake will be a self-locking brake. Right? So this is all for today's lecture. I hope you have understood this configuration of the differential band brake. In the next lecture, we will discuss the another configuration of differential band brake when A will be less than B and the force P will be acting in the upward direction. Thank you.